Welcome to the liquid-liquid extraction experiment. In this experiment, we're going to isolate caffeine and salicylic acid. Those are at a one-to-one -one mass ratio in a small vial. We're going to dissolve those in a solvent and then isolate each from the other. So that vial right there contains our one-to-one -one mixture of caffeine and salicylic acid. All right, now that we have the cap off, we're going to dump that into a zeroed weigh boat and see what the total mass is. So we have 1.28 grams. So 1.28 grams of our one-to-one -one mix of caffeine and salicylic acid. Ethyl acetate is the organic solvent that we're going to use. So we are going to attempt to dissolve both of those organic compounds in the organic solvent, ethyl acetate. So as we work on getting 10 milliliters of our ethyl acetate, let's look at a couple of the questions. Um, so for, for this, the goal is to dissolve both organic compounds in the organic solvent. Um, if we use two different solvents that are miscible in each other, then there's really no point in adding two solvents because there's no way to separate what each solvent has. Um, all the solvents and compounds would be intermixed as one thing. Right now we've added the 10 milliliters of ethyl acetate to the separatory funnel. Hopefully you've looked up the densities of a few of these. So water has a density of one gram per milliliter. Most organic solvents are less other than dichloromethane, which is more. So and essentially for most organic solvents, if we have um, an aqueous solution and organic solvent, usually the organic solvent will be the top layer. So like I said, water has a density of one gram per milliliter. If we have a small amount of hydrochloric acid or sodium hydroxide or many other things dissolved in water, the density is gonna still be remarkably close to one gram per milliliter. So that will still undoubtedly be the bottom layer in our separatory funnel. Now that we have our 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, we're going to add that to the solution. And notice that we had actually quite a bit of white solid. So our one-to-one -one mix of salicylic acid and caffeine did not fully dissolve into solution. And now we're working on getting everything to dissolve in solution. Now at this point, when we add hydrochloric acid, that's a strong acid which will interact with one of our two compounds. Okay, at this point we've shaken it up and everything is not dissolved in solution. So we're gonna work on that. A little bit more shaking was done to get all the solid to fully dissolve in solution before we move on. And at this point, now we have our two different layers. We have our organic solvent, ethyl acetate, on top and our water on the bottom. Right now we're adding in drops of water and you can see as the water hits the top layer of ethyl acetate, water is not soluble in ethyl acetate. It's more dense than ethyl acetate. So you can see that water sinking to the bottom and joining with our three molar hydrochloric acid layer. All right, after shaking that up well, now we are going to start separating out the layer of hydrochloric acid. So this bottom layer from the top layer. Now, like I said, that layer of hydrochloric acid, that's a strong acid. So that is going to interact with one of our compounds. It's not gonna be salicylic acid. So in your organic chemistry textbook, you never see an acid-acid interaction or an acid-acid um, proton transfer, what you do see is an acid-base reaction. So that's what's happening here. So the compound caffeine is going to interact with the hydrochloric acid. 
So specifically, we had quite a bit of caffeine in our organic solvent. When we added the three molar hydrochloric acid, caffeine is going to be protonated by the hydrochloric acid. So that caffeine is the base. It's going to take that proton. Once we take that proton, now we have a salt byproduct. So our protonated caffeine is now in the aqueous layer. We have an aqueous solution there with essentially this salt in it, and that is soluble in the aqueous solution. So that is soluble in water. We keep adding some hydrochloric acid, we keep adding sodium hydroxide to that to try to get it to neutralize or even make it um, more basic so we can actually then deprotonate that proton. So in the experiment right now, we have this protonated form of caffeine, this salt, which is in our aqueous solution. We need to add our sodium hydroxide, our strong base. We have a negative charge on that oxygen there. We need to add that strong base so we can deprotonate our caffeine. getting us back to caffeine in its original form, so this compound right here, which will not be water soluble. So now that we have a basic solution, we've made it so that caffeine is not as water soluble as it was, but unfortunately caffeine is relatively water soluble. It has quite a bit of hydrogen bonding potential, so we need to put that on the ice bath to allow that to come back out of solution. So right now we've got that sitting in an ice bath and we're ready for part two of the experiment. So now in our organic solvent, in our ethyl acetate, all we have in there left is salicylic acid. So we've extracted all of the caffeine out of our ethyl acetate. It was in that aqueous layer. We added sodium hydroxide to get that to come back out of the aqueous solution. And now we have our organic solvent ethyl acetate with salicylic acid in it. We're adding this 10% sodium hydroxide solution so that we can deprotonate our salicylic acid. So again, salicylic acid, the organic compound, was fully dissolved in our organic solvent ethyl acetate. We're adding 10% sodium hydroxide solution so we can deprotonate the salicylic acid and make it a salt, which means that that deprotonated version of salicylic acid or sodium salicylate will then be soluble in the aqueous layer. Now that we've let our layers separate, we mix that thoroughly together. We are going to separate the two layers. Most importantly, we're removing the, we are removing the aqueous layer from the organic solvent. It's hard to see, but this is the layer right here. So sometimes you have to look very closely, but that right there is the layer that is separating. So on top here, we have our ethyl acetate. On bottom, this area here, and then everything that's already been put into that beaker is our aqueous layer. And again, our aqueous layer is our basic solution. We had to have a basic solution so we could deprotonate our salicylic acid, making that a water-soluble salt. Now that we have isolated our aqueous solution, we are going to protonate that salt to make it less water soluble. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get 10 milliliters of this hydrochloric acid. And add that in and see what happens.
So as you can see, when we add in that hydrochloric acid, we're actually causing precipitate to form immediately. So the salicylic acid is much less soluble in an aqueous solution than what we saw for caffeine once that was back in its neutral form. Um, the vast majority of our salicylic acid is now reformed into salicylic acid because we added the acid back to it and it is not soluble in the aqueous solution. We're going to test the pH of that. It looks like our pH is around 2 to maybe as high as 3, but around 2 is definitely plenty to fully protonate that carboxylic acid. We've had the salicylic acid sitting in an ice bath. That's ready to be isolated now. The caffeine crystals still are not forming. So what we're doing right now is scraping the bottom of that beaker with that glass rod so that we can actually get those crystals to start forming for our caffeine. Let me expand this a little bit more here. So again, we're scraping the bottom of that beaker because the crystals had not started forming. A lot of times that initiates precipitate forming and it looks like that's what's happening there so our precipitate is finally starting to form um, essentially our caffeine is coming out of that aqueous solution so as that goes as we let more of our caffeine come out of that aqueous solution now we are going to isolate our salicylic acid we're going to put some filter paper there in our vacuum filtration apparatus, get that wet, make sure that's sealed so that none of that solid comes around that filter paper. We want to catch all that solid. Ideally, it'd be good if that was on an ice bath right before we did it to make sure we've maximized the amount of solid that comes out of solution. So essentially, salicylic acid will be less soluble in that aqueous solution if it's colder. Um, also, it's better to just pour this in a very slow stream in the middle of the filter paper rather than shaking it around at all. Um, so again, we can make sure that not much, if any, goes back into the aqueous solution. Um, and then now we're getting some ice cold water to rinse that to get all of that solid off the edges. Ideally, we'd probably use a metal spatula for the original transfer to essentially transport all of that solid that's in solution to the whey paper and then use that metal spatula to scrape it off the side rather than using um, quite a bit of water. A little bit of water is okay, some ice, like one or two milliliters of ice cold water is, is okay at the end, but I think we're probably going to have a slightly lower yield than optimal because we used um, so much water within this procedure. All right, now we're going to take this off, and um, that is our isolated salicylic acid. We let the air pull through for quite a while to dry that to dry that um, filter paper out and dry our isolated salicylic acid out as much as possible. But this is going to have to sit in a drawer for a week before we analyze it. So let's take a break for a second and look at this separatory funnel. So in this question, it is saying if we have a separatory funnel containing ethyl acetate and 3 molar HCl, once the one-to-one -one mixture is added, where is the caffeine? In what form is caffeine? Draw the molecular structure. So basically what that's saying is this is our ethyl acetate, T -O -A, often abbreviated ETOAC, ethyl acetate. This is our aqueous layer, which has some um, hydrochloric acid in it. So our salicylic acid, if we add a strong acid, 
is going to still be salicylic acid. So we have a carboxylic acid functional group and an alcohol functional group and we have an aromatic ring. That compound right there, all of that compound that we have in solution is going to be dissolved in our ethyl acetate. So ethyl acetate has all of the salicylic acid dissolved in it. This is where our caffeine is. So in that layer right there, since we added hydrochloric acid, this is where our caffeine is. So I actually showed that reaction before. Feel free to watch that video for the acid-base reaction. I'm going to say caffeine, but it's really not caffeine. It's caffeine that's protonated. So it's actually the salt or the conjugate acid of caffeine, which is why it's no longer soluble in the organic solvent, why it went down to the aqueous layer. So really, we probably don't have much hydrochloric acid in there either because that proton now is connected to the caffeine. And again, I drew that mechanism out, but once caffeine is in solution with hydrochloric acid, we shake that up in the separatory funnel, mix it around, the hydrochloric acid will interact with the caffeine, the caffeine will deprotonate the hydrochloric acid, or the hydrochloric acid will protonate the caffeine, giving us this conjugate acid. So that conjugate acid right there is essentially what I'm saying this caffeine with a proton on it is. Now that that's a salt, that's soluble in the aqueous solution. So that's the first thing that we separated out. And then what that means is what we had left once we removed this layer, so essentially once that went down into the beaker that we put it in, what we had left was our ethyl acetate and salicylic acid, and then we added sodium hydroxide to that so that we could then separate our salicylic acid from the ethyl acetate. There are other ways to do that. We'll learn about that more later. So another way to do that would be just to isolate this and evaporate off all of our ethyl acetate using a rotary evaporator. But we went a slightly longer around, but that's okay for practice um, for this experiment. All right, so one more time looking at this. So for question number nine, we isolated caffeine from the organic layer. It was then in the aqueous solution in a beaker. What we added was sodium hydroxide. So we added enough sodium hydroxide to make the solution basic, which means that we then deprotonated our caffeine to get us to caffeine in its neutral form. And hopefully if we keep that on an ice, so this caffeine in water, so when we dissolve it in the solvent water, if it's cool enough, that caffeine will start to crash out of solution or form crystals and not be soluble in the aqueous solution anymore. All right, for the salicylic acid, with this, I want to show this mechanism very quickly. So we've got all of our lone pairs on the oxygen and negative charge on that oxygen a positive charge on our sodium. For this sodium hydroxide, one of these lone pairs of electrons is going to go take that acidic proton on our salicylic acid. We'll put those electrons to form the conjugate base and that gets us this product. This product is then soluble in the aqueous solution. So when we added our 10% sodium hydroxide here, 10% sodium hydroxide NaOH, now that's actually probably become water and then we also have this in that layer as well. Now this was our organic solvent, ethyl acetate. That organic solvent is still in that top layer. Then we isolated this bottom layer, put it in a beaker. And later we'll talk about adding hydrochloric acid in the video. All right, right now in the video, this is our isolated salicylic acid. This is the water bath that has caffeine in it. So caffeine finally formed its crystals and it looks like it formed quite a few crystals um, in that beaker. So that's caffeine pretty much packed full there. It essentially fully solidified. So what we're doing now is isolating this. Again, I probably would have taken that metal spatula, scraped it out onto the filter paper. Um, we, we essentially want to minimize the amount of water. Also for the water source, it's definitely good to not use the ice that's in the, um, that's in the hallway in the lab. So if there's ice in the lab, it's probably not pure water. So you really want to get another beaker, put that on an ice bath. Once that water is ice cold, if you have to rinse with a small amount, 
you could rinse with that water. So ideally, this should have been scraped with a metal spatula to essentially remove all that solid, isolate it on the filter paper. And then if a small amount has to be rinsed, then you could get a small amount of ice cold water um, in a beaker. So hopefully you took deionized water from one of the tanks in the room, cooled that down, and then did a small rinse with, with uh, a very small amount of deionized water. All right, so when we looked into the um, into the funnel, we saw that caffeine was still wet. So basically we ran water through, um, essentially pulling air through that tube so that we could dry out that caffeine as much as possible. And now we're transferring the filter paper onto the watch glass to let that dry for a week.